Our laboratory is interested in hypertension and devising therapies to treat high blood pressure. And hypertension, a lot of people don't realize what a prominent disease this is. It affects about 60 million Americans. That would be about 25% of the population. And in some countries, the incidence of hypertension is as high as 35 or 40%. Now, what is hypertension? Hypertension is when the blood vessels that are in your body constrict too much. It's like pushing in on a balloon and that the pressure inside the vessels is extremely high. And when this happens, it disrupts the blood flow to your critical organs. That would include, for example, your brain and your kidneys and your heart. So hypertension is associated with what's called end organ damage. Or when you get hypertension, you also get diseases of the brain and the heart and the kidneys and can die from diseases in those organs. Now, lots of people think that high blood pressure is easily controlled. And I often hear this. People will say, well, why are you studying high blood pressure? Because we know that there's a lot of drugs that can lower blood pressure. And in fact, there's more than 100 drugs on the market that you can choose from, different drug families and different durations of action. But the problem is really that most antihypertensive drugs have a very short duration of action. You have to take them once or twice a day. Not only that, but usually just one drug will not lower your blood pressure. You have to take one or two or three or four short-acting drugs, sometimes more, to try to get your blood pressure back to normal. Some of these drugs are very costly. They're not all on your $4 list at your pharmacy. Some of these drugs for a month worth of treatment will cost you $60 or $80 or $100 a month, and you might be on four or five of them. So treating hypertension can be very expensive. And because when you take antihypertensive drugs by mouth, they go everywhere in the body, not just to the blood vessels to try to open them up and lower a high blood pressure, but they also go to your liver, they go to your kidney, they go to your brain, they go everywhere. There's many side effects that are associated with antihypertensive drugs. So now, how do we treat hypertension right now? We treat them hypertension with many short-acting drugs. So hypertension, in fact, is only controlled in 30 to 35% of the population that have it. Some are undiagnosed, but even those that are treated, only about a third have normal blood pressure. And the main problem really is compliance or adherence to the drug regime. Because you, you take someone with hypertension, normally you can't feel that you have hypertension, so often they're feeling okay. You give them lots of drugs, they have to pay a lot of money, they have a lot of side effects, and they're very unlikely to take them. So again, we have to find therapies that and this is a, from a recent review in cardiology reviews, that adherence is crucial. We have to have patients adhere to drug regimens, and we have to design therapies that are for the real world, not expect patients to take a lot of drugs at high cost with high side effects, but try to design therapies really that are conducive to everyday living, where you could take, for example, one treatment a month or one treatment a year and lower your blood pressure. And that's really the goal of our laboratory and of the other cardiovascular scientists and physicians here at UMS that study hypertension, to design new therapies that are really for the real world. So we know that, for example, short-acting drugs will not work. So we have a new plan, really, for the design of drugs. And we have hopes that we can actually inject therapeutic genes, that's like gene therapy, into people, a single injection that would lower blood pressure for months or for years. In other words, if you went to your doctor's office and you had high blood pressure, they could give you an injection, almost like a vaccine, and those vessels that are constricting in your body and driving up your blood pressure would open up, not for a day, not for six hours, not for just a short time, but open up for years or you know, even a period of decades. And we have a plan to do this right now that's funded by the National Institutes of Health. And what we want to do to reduce side effects is not only to inject a therapeutic gene, and I'll talk about that in a minute, to lower blood pressure, but also to deliver it only to your blood vessels. We don't want to put in a drug that goes everywhere in your body and causes lots of side effects. 
but we just want to put in, use gene therapy to put in a dilator gene and open up only your blood vessels. We want this reagent to go only to the arteries of your body. Now, how can we accomplish that? Well, one way to accomplish that is to use a virus. Viruses can get inside cells, and they can incorporate into the DNA inside those cells, for example, the cells of a blood vessel that cause it to contract. And the virus will go into the DNA, into the nucleus of the cell, and put out a protein, for example, a therapeutic protein, it'll produce one that can make that cell relax, for example, in a blood vessel and open it up. So you can take a virus, and, and this is not a virus that causes an immune reaction or that can replicate, for example, and spread around your body, but you can take a therapeutic virus, and there's cores to make this in the country, sponsored by the government, for example, that will take your drug, your, your, in, your encoding gene for the drug, put it into a cell, and have that gene, that drug expressed really on the cell to open it up, for example, and to lower blood pressure. So we plan to use a viral delivery system, for example, that we think we can inject just a single time and lower blood pressure for weeks or even for years. And we have some evidence that we can accomplish that. Now, if you can see this picture, I just want to show you that in green is a therapeutic gene that could be delivered to your blood vessels to lower blood pressure. And I'd like to see, to you to see what can be accomplished. For example, if you look in the first square, this would be on your upper left, it says aorta, that's a blood vessel that's in your body. And you can see that bright green color. So that green color would represent the therapeutic gene. So 10 weeks after we injected this gene that could lower blood pressure, you can see it in this blood vessel of a, of a mouse. Now, if you look at the muscle, this would be the skeletal muscle. This is actually the quadricep, which is the big muscle in the front of your leg. Or if you look at the heart of that animal, or the kidney, or the brain, or the bladder, you do not see that bright green color. So we don't pretend to have all the answers. We know that we have a lot of work to do. And there's some important questions that we have to address. For example, we don't really know, like I said, how long our therapy will last. We know that if you take a pill to lower blood pressure, it will last maybe 6 or 12 hours, or for the longest ones, perhaps a day. But we can give a single injection, and we can already lower blood pressure for a matter of weeks or months. Second, we'd like to figure out how we can turn off that gene that's being made, that protein in your vascular muscle cells that's causing your blood vessels to open up and lower blood pressure. We'd like to know how to turn it off so that if your blood pressure would come down naturally, which normally it doesn't in hypertensive patients, but it's possible, or if you were in a car accident, for example, and lost some blood and your blood pressure started going down by itself, that we could turn off our therapeutic drug and let you regulate your blood pressure now on your own. And finally, we'd like to look at organs, for example, the brain and the heart and the kidney, and make sure that our therapies is still permitting blood flow to be regulated normally to those organs. For example, that if your heart all of a sudden needed blood, that our treatment would still let blood come in rapidly to the heart and would in no way disrupt the regulation of blood flow uh, to the myocardium, to the, to the heart cells. So we know we still have some work to do, and these are some of the studies that we're starting to focus on. Not just my laboratory, but again, this whole team of cardiovascular scientists and physicians here at UAMS. So in a capsule, in a nutshell, the take-home message from our laboratory is that we're working really hard day in and day out to really to try to cure hypertension. We don't think that short-term drugs are the answer. In fact, it's been shown that they're not. And we feel like it's time to think outside the box a little bit and to try to provide people with long-term treatment for hypertension.